Lord Allen is, is a vastly experienced uh, chairman of companies and formerly a chief executive of companies, uh, publicly owned um, uh, listed companies and privately owned companies in different parts of the world. Um, he shared many of his experiences and learnings with uh, a group of Tomorrow's Company members and partners, and uh, we're here to talk about some of the highlights. Lord Allen, you talked a lot about the importance of people and culture, and I asked you, what are some of the main ways in which you, as a chairman, as a member of a board, can make sure an organization actually upholds its culture? Well, the culture starts in the boardroom. What you need is a clear strategy in the boardroom, and you need the right people. So you start with the people and culture in the boardroom. But actually, non-execs, executives, need to get out and about and understand what the culture is on the ground. We've used lots of different methodologies in terms of people who represent the organization coming and talk to us, uh, site visits, country visits, just talking to people. I call it rattling around uh, and listening to what people are saying. But it really is important to say this company is here to drive shareholder value ethically, legally, and morally, but you need the right people and culture to achieve that. One of the big difficulties we've heard from, from chairman in the past is the what we have come to call the clutter of compliance, all those things that fill the boardroom agenda. How do you keep the boardroom agenda clear enough so that you can concentrate on these vital issues? I think managing the agenda is really important. You need a cycle, a quarterly cycle, so you know you're going to focus on things. At my various board meetings, we have the first half of the agenda is strategic issues. You then have some financial review, but that's not looking backwards, that's looking forward. And then you focus on governance, because I've seen governance take over whole agendas or governance not be there. But to help you do that, then you need to be well prepared. The papers need to be tight in my business, no more than 100 pages, because you see companies having 300 pages. Uh, so that's one thing you can do to help. We also use committees. So in advance of board meetings, committees can look at whether that's risk or whether that's basically transactions. So we've used committee structures to help you know, give the board confidence there's been a detailed review. In one of my businesses, we have something called the Transaction Committee, who effectively reviews any big deals, not just acquisitions, but basically big deals. Uh, and then I think that focus on the agenda in terms of, you know, when executor asked to present, it's five slides with five points, not death by PowerPoint. So I think you can actually give, you know, you can really work hard to take out the clutter, and you need to clean and sweep it every six months or so, because the clutter tends to creep back in. And what about the way in which uh, you, you deal with remuneration? That came up almost inevitably. What we felt was sometimes remuneration is too narrowly defined because I think you need to look at you know people, culture, and remuneration, and not just the senior team. And I think we, we, we with one of our companies, we have a non-exec director who chairs that committee made up of executives. And what they're looking at is basically, are those things in terms of reward, recognition, uh, uh, you know, really built into the culture of the organisation. And we find that means the debate is a much more rounded, more informed debate. And what about how you achieve diversity? Well, in Denmark, we're required to have a percentage uh, of people in the boardroom on the board. We had set a target of 2019 of having 30% women on the board. We've already achieved that target and have set a target of 40% by 2020. But in some ways, the boardroom, it's easier. What we've also done there is actually put a number of initiatives in place in terms of rewarding succession and therefore female succession being built into, into executive reward. 50% uh, of our graduates, are, the intake is, is, are women. 50% of the people in all our management courses are women. And increasingly, in some of our countries, we're actually putting women it's sitting in the board, not on the board, to give them experience and exposure. And I think I'm delighted that you know we're seeing you know in some of the countries like Singapore or China, over 70% of our senior executives are women. So we have a long way to go, and there's no easy answer. But I think it's definitely on the agenda because it changes the dynamic in a meeting. And it's not just about male female. It's about diversity of thinking. It's not about they will bring a different dynamic. And I find you know diversity, background, training, mix of executive, non-executive, mix of marketing skills and finance skills. It's that diversity that really adds to the debate in the boardroom. I was also fascinated to hear you talk about how much time you devote yourself to being a mentor and what, what, what in your view, works being a mentor. Would you care to describe that? 
Well, in a number of my companies, I joke about as, chief, as chairman being the mentor and tormentor of a chief executive. And that's really about this balance of holding to account and motivating and supporting. It's chief executive is a fantastic job, but it's very lonely. So you're playing a support role, but you're also equally challenging. And then a number of businesses and outside the business I'm currently involved with, then I play a mentoring role for individuals, helping them think about their priorities, help them think about optimizing their own time because the most valuable thing is their time. So managing the diary, and that sound, might sound mundane, but you know, time, you, time, you know, but, you know, not having enough time is one of the big issues that all of them complain about. So getting them to think through how they can do that better. And then on the people front, you know, holding a mirror up to them and listening to them, what did we do last week, or what did we do on this issue, and what could we do better? And I think that that's about, and it's not about directing them, it's about being an ability for them to actually see themselves in a different light. Lord Alan, thank you very much.